Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Marduk, and today we are back in the Sandflow Caves, of course, and we are going back through to see where we can go now that we have unlocked the green doors. Because we saw several of those walls previously, and we've gone through one of them, at least gone around the other side so we didn't actually need to go past it. But we'll see where else we can check out. And along the way, we'll run into some loop zones, of course. So we'll lightning bolt these guys. And Charlotte. Oh, actually, can start to take them out in one hit there, even when she's targeting everyone at once. I thought previously we found that that was not the case. So, not sure where she's getting the extra damage from, per se, but... Okay, sounds good. As for Donovan here, when we were talking about deliberately getting rid of the Soul Strike on his offensive reaction there, I don't think we've done it yet, but that is just a reminder that we perhaps ought to do that. At least when we anticipate that we're going to be fighting enemies that are predominantly resistant to fire. And there's actually Marduk's offensive reaction on his sword. I don't necessarily think that we have an alternative form at the moment. I think this is still the best sword for him. We'll probably stick with this. However, I do think that there might have been some alternatives if we wanted to get rid of 20% crit and, say, put on 30% damage instead. I think, mathematically, assuming that crits are double damage, this is still slightly higher in terms of average damage relative to plus 30% damage. However, 30% damage is, of course, more consistent, where you know you're going to get 30 damage every time, 30% damage every time, whereas crit, sometimes you'll get a lot more than that, sometimes you'll get a lot less. So maybe we stick with 30% for the time being, just to keep things a little more consistent and reliable so that we know what to expect when we're attacking with Marduk. For Donovan, what I'm suggesting is that we get rid of Soul Strike here so that we are no longer having his attacks go fire elemental every time we hit those offensive reactions so that way we know we can still get the plus 10% damage, we can still get the poison chance and not have to worry about are we also going to change the element to something that's less than ideal. Let's take a quick peek as well at other skills here just to make sure that we don't have other things that people can equip. After they've leveled up, maybe we forgot to equip new things. It's always a possibility. Not sure we've been checking super diligently to see if people have more RP than we initially set up their skills to use. Seems like we're fine there, though. So, I believe the next area we want to go through is up here, if I'm not mistaken. This is, I'm pretty sure, one of the places where we saw one of those green walls blocking us right here, and it's no longer there. So we did end up going through here from a different angle. So this specific area, I do think we've been to before. Okay, Sharla, are you going to be able to take these guys out? That would be fantastic if you could get them in one hit here. Unfortunately, you can't, so they will get attacks, and they are quite strong, less so with their physical attacks, so we'll take that. And I think we probably do still go with flames here, because these guys, remember, have high magical defense, very high evasion, though. So, I think we'll take the low damage over potentially no damage. And then, do we go for a physical attack here with Mardek and risk missing? I think we give it a shot. If he does miss, Slynick can also give it a shot. If he misses, then Charlotte can use the spell, and then we're pretty much guaranteed to take it out at that point. So, Mardek misses. Round two with Slynick. He misses. Charlotte. Bail us out here. Thank you. And with Charlotte taking out all those guys, remember that the person who does get the actual kill gets more experience, so therefore, well, that might mean that Charlotte actually starts to jump ahead of Donovan in terms of experience. I did see that she's a little bit further along, roughly half a level, I think. So I'm not sure if we had access to this area before. I think this might be new to us, so we'll have to see what else is on this side, other than just Lots of happy Johnnies. So, I think the same rules apply here. More lightning bolts. They will get attacks in this time as well. But we'll take the physical attacks. Donovan could very well need a heal here. You can take out one of them. Oh, that one has six HP remaining. So, Marduk, let's take this opportunity to throw down a quick heal. Slinik, this time maybe? Yes, okay, there we go. Carl actually could sort of use a heal as well. 
Not a Phoenix sound. That's actually fantastic. And a Remedy, those are valuable as well. That's nice to see. Yeah, there's definitely ground for us to cover here. Let's make sure that we provide Charlotte with the heal as well, because some of these guys can hit quite hard. So, oh, oh, I actually didn't realize you can heal everyone in one fell swoop on this page as well. There we go. Charla healed. That way, if we fight an antlion and it goes first and opts to attack Charla, then even then we're still in decent shape. Okay, so let's ask ourselves here. Do we want to go down first or up? Looks like if we go down, there's a red. I'm assuming it's a wall, not a switch, but we can double check. It is a wall. Okay. We can't go through there just yet. So that does mean we'll want to head up, I would think. More happy Johnnies. I'm sensing a bit of a theme here. Again, they will get attacks in. A needle flare has the poison chance, I think, the lower damage than the thousand needles, but it adds the poison. And Slinic, I do think we opted to use poison resistance. Actually, it might just be that his 20% ended up being enough to stop it. So we lucked out there, I think. Donovan does manage to take one of the Happy Johnnies out, and that is enough for him to level here. And Marduk, do we need you to heal right now? Not so much. Linux did take some damage, but I think he'll be okay for the time being, and Marduk does manage to get the finishing blow. So if we take every battle to heal up afterward, Donovan does manage to master plus one agility. If we heal after every single battle with Marduk, we are going to blow through our MP very quickly. So I'm not sure if that's really a sustainable answer for us. And let's see. There's a chest down here. Let's nab this for more Phoenix downs. Let's continue to split them a bit between different party members. I feel like Slinic with the most HP is the most likely to be able to use them. Least likely to go down, and I'm sure these Happy Johnnies are now going to use the Thousand Needles on Slinic just to prove me wrong. Maybe. Or maybe not. Thankfully, at that. Okay, Donovan again takes one down with one hanging on by a little bit of HP, and Marduk again can take it out. Does mean, though, because they're quick enough, they are still sneaking in attacks before we can take them out. No, Rotted Cactus. This is the first one of these we've gotten. I think it's a crafting item? I don't remember. Pretty sure it is. Okay, and then if we head this way, we'll find one of the other Reptoids. We heard that there are several of them in this location. It's good to find another. Oh there, chief of mine. What's up? I need you to return to the village, warrior. These humans and I shall handle the search. Gotcha, daddy-o. Peace. Okay, it's uh, interesting from that Reptoid. Okay, so there's this chest here. It has a topaz. We've seen plenty of these in the Sun Temple. And then there are two options here. There's this area that goes through a door. It looks like there are no walls blocking us through this way, so we should be able to take that route. Also, I see this, which looks like it has a chest at the end. Let's go that route. I feel like there is a non-zero chance that one of these is a hidden pathway. Even now, it's a narrow route that seems like typically, you know, those hidden pathways are just one block wide. Oh, there's Thousand Needles. See you later, Charla. And they also tend to wind around a little bit. So I'm guessing it's going to be this one with the chest. I may be wrong, but okay. Charla is now down to one HP after that, so we definitely do want to heal her here. I think, like I was saying before, because Marduk is going to blow through MP very quickly at this pace, even Donovan and Charla, because they're using so many spells against the Happy Johnnies, we're going to probably want to use potions and things like that to heal people rather than using Marduk so that we have MP for the actual battles themselves. I suppose we could use items in the battles as well. Oh no, not hidden. Okay, so we'll just check this one out. It does seem awfully suspicious though. Having one this far removed from everything else. I feel like there's definitely a chance this is a battle. It is not though. It's actually a very good healing potion, 500 HP. Again, I think let's put that on Slinic. 
We have to choose between different people. Oh, we could actually split that a little bit between party members because there were three of those. Let's do that. Because, like I was saying, Slinik is the tankiest with 700 plus HP. Almost as tanky as Marduk. I'm thinking relative to Marduk. Marduk already had several, but that means that in theory, Slinik would be the least likely to fall down in battle and therefore the most likely to be able to heal others on his turn. So we'll head on up and through the other area. Okay, this guy is going to attack first and use his Berserk. So that means we have a bit of an opportunity here, hopefully, to take him out before he gets a chance to take a turn. Because if he does, we've seen what happens. And the answer is, it's not good news for us. Okay, with less than 200 HP, Marduk surely, surely can take this guy out, right? Otherwise, he is, no pressure or anything, going to kill you with this reaction. And Marduk says, no worries, I got your lids, I'll crit. Even after we took off the crit reaction, still does have, I believe it was 10% base crit chance on that sword, which is still really high. We'll head on over here, where theoretically we will find that door, and as to where exactly it leads us in the Sandflow Caves, well, we're about to find out. Is this a section we've seen before? It doesn't look like it. Map not explored at all. What will be on this side? I'm not sure. Oh, I did absentmindedly skip that one. My apologies. And lots of different directions we could go in here. So take your pick. I don't know, top right seems like it's closest at this point in time. And a couple of chests, so why not? More remedies, also sounds good. Noxious bomb. Bomb filled with powdered chemicals which explodes on impact. The resulting smoke induces drowsiness, confusion, blindness, and poison. So basically, an item that we throw, much like the damage dealing potions we saw earlier, except this one, instead of dealing direct damage, causes many status effects. So, as to who would be best to use this? That's a good question. Not entirely sure. Maybe Donovan? Not sure there's necessarily a right answer there. Again, when in doubt, I feel like my answer is generally going to be Slinic, so I have to find a reason not to choose Slinic there. Okay, there is an NPC of sorts over there, it seems, based on that green dot. Let's continue around this way, though, because we have not seen this either. And it, oh, is a switch. It's a red switch at that. We did see a red door previously. So theoretically, we should be able to go through that now. And I also think I see a save crystal down and in this direction. So we were talking about not having a lot of MP at the moment. So hopefully that means we'll be able to restore it. And these blood lizards shouldn't be too much of a problem at this stage. Compared to some of the other enemies we've seen, the Happy Johnnies, the Antlions, comparatively speaking, they're not so bad. And so we don't want to use flame, because these were the guys we had in mind when we were saying we want to avoid dealing fire damage. So now, we should be able to use Donovan's attacks and hit the reaction, and not go fire. There you go. So that way we're dealing a little bit more damage than we would have otherwise dealt, and we still have that chance of causing poison. So we know Marduk has mastered his offensive reaction. I'm not sure that Slimic has mastered his yet on this new weapon. So we might want to deliberately make sure that Slimic has more opportunities to attack. I think sometimes Marduk is stealing his thunder a little bit because they both deal typically enough damage to take out an enemy in one hit. And so Marduk having higher agility than Slimic is basically getting those kills before Slimic can. Ooh, Sharla masters her magic defensive reaction there. That could be interesting, because I do think that's on her chest light. It is. So we could swap something over for Sharla here. Out of curiosity, how close is Donovan to finishing Resist Earth? Very close. So if we wait a little while longer, we might just swap these two. Otherwise, we have plenty of defensive reactions on rogues left over from when Emla was using these. So that could be something we throw on Sharla. We've seen that it typically does take quite some time to master these magic reactions, so this might be a fairly long-term thing that it's unlikely for Charlotte to finish, at least certainly not in the next four battles while we're waiting for Donovan to finish this. However, I think Slinik might be done. Oh no, Slinik is not even done with this. I'm pretty sure this might have been his first chest plate. Wow. So we need people to attack Slinik physically. Okay, let's equip that on Charlotte. That reaction here. 
and we'll play the rest by ear a little bit. See who happens to master things first. And take a quick look at the map to see what our other options are. There are definitely areas down here that we may be able to loop around to get to them once we go past this, whatever this guy is. And like I said before, after hitting that red switch, in theory, I think it was, was it over here? And that might be the way that we get through this area down here. But let's check out, what? Is that a, a cactus with a crown on it? There's something strange about this cactus. For one thing, it has a crown on it. For another thing, it looks like it wants to battle you out of disgruntled malcontentedness. Yes! Indeed! It's King Cuthbert, and I absolutely missed that reaction. Those happy Johnnies, they're just second fiddle to King Cuthbert here, who has 60% evasion rather than 70, so slightly easier to hit, and actually lower magic defense, I believe, as well, 13 versus 15. It's a little bit easier to hit, a little bit easier to deal damage to. However, look at the HP here. Happy Johnny's, 150 or so. King Cuthbert, in order of magnitude, more than that. So, look out. Very weak to air, so that does mean that Charla, you're going to be in high demand here. Somewhat weak to fire, in which case, might have been useful actually to re-equip that Soul Strike on Donovan for the physical attacks if we're looking to go that route. Maybe we won't, given the evasion. Very high light resistance and earth resistance. Not sure we have too many attacks that are going to fall under that category because we have switched to a non-elemental sword with Marduk, so we don't need to worry about healing King Cuthbert. Otherwise, we'd be in serious trouble there with Marduk. So, question now, I think, is do we deliberately try to target King Cuthbert or do we take out the Happy Johnnies first? I don't remember if he tries to respawn them if we take these guys out. That is an interesting thought, though. Let's give it a shot here. We probably do want those guys to use their physical attacks. Fortunately, we have avoided poisons, at least for Sharla. Less so for Donovan. Can the flame still take out one or two of the Happy Johnny's? Okay, that is big. So now it is just King Cuthbert here. And as for Marduk and Slinik. That would mean we have to use physical attacks. Well, Slinik does have his fire breath ability. Maybe we heal with Marduk here, because Donovan is not looking great right now. Get him back up to almost full. So this is the safe option here to go the fire breath route. He does have some weakness to fire. And like we were saying earlier, a little bit less magic defense. So maybe that's okay. But we would definitely still deal more damage with the physical attack. So... Uh, maybe we play it safe for the time being, but we might get more desperate later on, depending on how exactly this goes. So 250 damage around there. That's what we should expect with the Fire Breath. That's good to know. Lightning Bolt's probably still the way to go, Charla. You are the most straightforward person in terms of dealing damage, because we know you're going to hit with the Lightning, and we know that it's going to be particularly effective, given that King Cuthbert has weakness to air. Donovan... Not going to be quite as much damage, but I think it still does make sense for you to attack here. Marduk, do you need to heal? It would be nice if you healed Charla. On this occasion, maybe we can settle for a potion, though. Save some MP. There is a healing crystal very nearby, though, so if we do finish this battle with just a tiny bit of MP remaining, in theory, we should be able to get that back very soon. So I think we do go offensive here in that case. Except you missed, unfortunately. It was that risk, of course. Still more likely to miss than hit. Do we take our chances again with Slinik? I think Slinik still has the Fire Breath, so let's give that an option. Give that a go. But it is actually more damage than Donovan. Which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought that Donovan is a little bit better of a spellcaster than Slinik, but apparently not this time. And that's actually a pretty high amount of damage that King Cuthbert dealt to Donovan there with his normal attack. So much so that we're likely to need to heal Donovan and maybe even Charla as well next go round. Do damage with Charla. Donovan, same with you, I think. And then Marduk, you will likely need to do a full party heal here to cover both Charla and Donovan. And then Slinik. King Cuthbert's HP is getting low here. So I think we go Fire Breath. 
It's not going to be enough to take him out, but I would hope that between Charlotte and Donovan and maybe one more round of Slinic, we'll be able to get it done next turn. It's going to be close. Needle Storm. Oh, that means everyone. That means everyone now. Okay, but we do now have everyone who can take a turn before King Cuthbert's next turn. So I think we'll be good here, even if Donovan and Marduk are both poisoned at this stage. It's not going to deal enough damage to put them in jeopardy after only one turn here. So with a good Lightning Bolt, that brings him very low here. I don't think Flame will be enough, but it'll bring him... Oh, except it will be. Except it will be. So there you have it. King Cuthbert down. Another Potted Cactus. And we get the Regal Crown. Let's check that out. Antibody and Insomnia done for Charla. That might have actually helped us out there, having Antibody. Who's not getting poisoned. So Cactus down. That is, of course, a mini-boss and potentially a difficult one. I think, given how we did have our fair share... Oh, uh-oh. I assumed we were going to make it to the same crystal there. But this Temperance says, I have other plans for you. Okay, so let's, I think, go all out offense on this guy. And try to take him out before he gets a chance to deal much damage to us. But he will go next, which means if he attacks Donovan, Donovan may not survive this one. So Donovan, you could opt to heal here. Bear in mind, we are standing quite literally directly in front of a safe crystal right now. So again, I think maybe we deal with that if that does happen. Now he will heal to fire damage. So I think that means that we do want to use a physical attack here. And remember, we unequipped Soul Strike, so this should still work even if we hit the reaction. Fortunately, Temperance opts to target Marduk instead. And Marduk, you should be fine with physical attack here. Very nearly takes him out. Zlinik, your time to shine, buddy. Okay, so no worries there. Even Donovan with the low HP, he's fine. Now we heal up, and we're definitely good. But let's check out what that crown is all about. After we pick that up, who did we put that on? Charla here? One defense, one magic defense, which is not a ton. But we haven't been getting a lot of defenses from our helmets anyways. It's basically the same as the bronze circlets here, and roughly equivalent to the, to the kettle hats as well. Just instead of pure defense, it's splitting between magic and physical. A golden crown that once belonged to some kind of monarch, may or may not have been a cactus, looks expensive. It gives the double gold ability, which is a passive, and takes 100 battles to learn. Also gives plus one to every attribute. So it's an interesting one. It is basically just a slightly better version of the other helmets that we have thus far, in addition to giving us access to that double gold ability and a little bit of attributes, make it just slightly better. So who would we like to put that on? In theory, I think it would be someone who does not have a lot of passive skills at the moment, because I do think that double gold takes up a ton of RP. Now, do people necessarily need to have multiple status immunities equipped at the same time? Maybe not, so I'm looking at Charla here and wondering, yeah, Antibody, we were just saying, probably did come in handy there. But Insomnia, I'm not sure we've been seeing many people inflicting sleep, and plus one agility is usually not going to be a humongous deal. So Charla might be a candidate here. As for Donovan, honestly, might be an even better candidate because Resist Earth, he's two battles away from mastering that, and once he does that, maybe we can take that off. We haven't seen too many people dealing Earth damage in and around this area either, and then he's going to have lots of room to throw on other things, and again, plus one agility, not a huge deal there either. Whereas Mardek, you're working on a few things, and we probably want to keep you working on resist water until you master that, at least. And Slinic, similar to Charla with the whole numerous status immunity things. So I think the answer in that case is likely Donovan. But let's take a look real quick at what is on the other side of this area that we just cleared out. Because it does seem like this likely connects to the southern half of this area here. More antlions. They will attack. And oh my goodness. Doesn't even need to go in rage. Just one hit. And it can almost take out Charla. So Charla. 
Well, let's maybe attack it back in that case. Take it out before it can actually take us out. And again, Marduk, you could heal here. And then, you know what? I think we should. Like we were saying earlier, we want to make sure that Slimic has more opportunities to attack. This is one of those chances. And Slimic absolutely seizes that opportunity. Nice. Okay, so we'll head on down here. And, oh. What is this? This will, I believe, be what is technically the way out of this area. Now, there are certainly other areas of the Sandflow Caves that we've not yet explored. As you can see here, there are many other chests in these corners here. I suspect that, as I was saying earlier, now that we have activated that red switch, we can head on through and pick those up. I'm thinking that might actually be the preferred way to go here. We'll leave that a mystery for the time being. So let's double back and make sure that we don't miss out on any potentially good loot. I don't know what we have in those chests there, but hopefully it's something good. Blood lizards, not too much of a concern, right? We'll just take these guys out. Chance to finish up a few more battles and hopefully master up some of those abilities that we're very close to mastering, and we do need people to attack the clinic physically. So that's fine. Probably want to use the physical attacks with Donovan. That'll be more effective than a fire spell, but these guys are resistant to fire, so probably should opt not to do that. They can still get an attack in, and he is critting all the time now, it seems. Does have a relatively high base crit chance on that axe, I think. There is Resist Earth. And so we were saying, maybe you take off the Geo Jacket on Donovan now. We'll throw something else on instead. And Darla could be the person to adopt that. Or, yeah, because I think Charlotte didn't have anything that she was working on, or just recently mastered her defensive skill on her chest plate. Let's take these off. Put on Resist Earth. She didn't have time to fully master or potentially even use the magic resistance on the other chest plate that she had on ever so briefly. I think she did get three in, though. I guess King Cuthbert and Happy Johnny's did get a few attacks. So that's one thing. Oh, and let's make sure that Donovan does activate that himself. Would need to unequip magic fire because he doesn't have enough room for it. Okay, hold on. In that case, maybe it is better for us to swap over to not the 30% magic damage reduction, but the 20, which I believe is coming from his original chest plate. The one that he and Charlotte both use. Let's double check that. There we go. Okay, and that does fit, because that costs fewer RP. We'll do that, and I suppose we'll just grab a quick heal. And as for the most efficient way back through here, I think it would be up through this area. And then we need to go through the other door to find our way into that area with the other chests that we have not yet seen. More Happy Johnnies. So it seems like if we were to theoretically want to level up and master our magic defensive reactions, then it's probably against these guys that we want to do that. That is a little bit of a daunting thought, though, because, of course, they do have... Not that ability. That's probably the one you would want to have them use to master those abilities. But when they use the Thousand Needles... That, as we've said before, basically means that they take someone out immediately. That's a risk. And probably not a risk that we'd want to subject ourselves to unnecessarily. So again, we could attack here with Marduk. Likely that he misses. Queen Slinik. You can still get a chance here. Except you will also miss. So Sharla. You can take care of this, right? She can, and she can level up with that. Or potted cacti. Nice. Donovan is poisoned right now. Let's do a quick remove taint. Pardek, after having just used the sage crystal, is fine on MP. So I believe it was this spot down here that we were not able to go through before. Yeah, there was a red wall right here, wasn't there, at the end of the bridge? So let's go through there and see what we find. I think based on what we saw in the previous area, we have a pretty good sense. Lots of chests.
Okay, more of the opals and topazes. These guys, I think I was saying it earlier, but I think I stand by it. Probably the easiest enemies in this area. Um, those topazes, ever so briefly, seem to uh, become chameleons and turn into fire opals instead. They're messing with our brains. Okay, so we'll take the topaz. And there's plus one strength and insomnia for Slinnick, which means he suddenly has a lot of passives he can start to use. If he's done with this, that means... He's also done with insomnia. I do wonder... Oh, that's the wrong place for that. <laughs> that's why that doesn't work. I wonder if he has enough RP to use the double gold that might be worth pursuing. And then... It does still mean that he has room for another accessory. He's done with this one, too. So, did he master plus one agility? He may have already. He may not have. He is not. So that's an option. I think given how this is going to likely spend most, if not all, of his RP, we might want to look for something that gives a different type of skill. Like, for example, do we start to use one of these types of amulets here that gives him a magic defensive reaction to resist fire? We've seen a lot of fire damage, so that might be worthwhile. And I don't think he has any magic defensive reactions other than this one that we just put on. As for double gold, yeah, it costs 10 RP. So he would need to get rid of everything except for his dragon blood ability, the one that gives him a little bit of resistance to poison, numbness, sleep, and paralysis we saw earlier. That seems to have already paid off, even if it's just 20%. But here you see double gold earned from battle. If multiple characters have it, it adds plus 100% for each one. Two characters gives 300% gold, for example. So, it's a luxury. Of course, it doesn't directly affect how powerful you are in battle, but if you are, say, grinding some levels, trying to get experience and master up some abilities, then if you can squeeze on that additional gold, then that makes it all the more lucrative for you to do those battles, of course. Okay, so, as anticipated, yes, this does send us to this other area over here that we saw, but we're not able to go into previously. We'll have to see just how much gold we are getting now. And it is in theory double, of course, but wasn't necessarily taking note of exactly how much we were typically getting at the end of battles. It'll be hard to say exactly how much... Well, I guess we, we do know exactly how much more we would be getting at this stage. And again, flame not going to make sense here. We're going to use a physical attack. And Slinnick, I believe you will do the same. And Slinnick is going before Marduk now, because I believe with his second accessory we did throw on the Topaz, which does give a little bit of agility, even if we didn't equip the plus one agility skill. That would have been even more agility on top of that. Okay, so Marduk, I think you're also just attacking here. And Charla, can you finish off this Blood Blizzard? We... I think we're still looking to do physical attacks with you, Charlotte. This looks like an opportunity to do that. I don't think you've mastered the poison. Or the plus 10% damage, but I think are both things you're getting from this weapon here. And that's not bad damage, actually. A little over 100. Could be roughly the same as Donovan. I think your strength stat is slightly lower. Oh, and another Reptoid, I do believe. This might be the last one, in fact. Mopo. Nothing to report yet, Chief. This one's a slippery one. Your searching is over, warrior. Return to the village. But our work is not done. Though, you know best. You have a plan. I have faith in you, Chief. Oh, but Chief, do you know what this is? I found it lying around in the sand and felt drawn to it. I have no use for it, though. Take it, and I shall see you at the village. Yeah, Lord Speed. Okay, and what was this that we just received? I do think it was a new Dreamstone, and so that is what you get when you free all the Reptoids, so all the more reason to make sure that you do rescue all of them. I was saying earlier how we theoretically could have gone into the next area, but it was important that we double back, made sure that we found the last guy. So let's check this out. He looks so sad. We barely even spoke, though. 
We didn't know each other, but it looked like he missed me and like he'd miss his mother. His mother. Parents. Mother. I hope you're safe. I really, really hope. I wonder if it's a male thing. I have so little experience with these things. I always worry if the things I'm doing are so wrong. What if I was leading him on or something without realizing it? What if I don't think like they do? Or they like me? I think my dad said that once. He was nice looking, though. I think. But I don't know if that's true, because I've seen so few young men before. I don't like biological urges, though. I dread getting into some... some... relationship, only to disappoint my naivete, ineptitude. Lying under a light does not a competent person make. I feel like I'm acting all the time. Faking it. Forcing things. Behaviors that my parents taught me. I've read about stuff, but doing it is so different. If only they saw the real me, then they'd be disappointed. They both had their eyes on me, I noticed. I feel bad. I don't want to attract attention. At least now I'm going back to where I feel most at home. I'm actually really relieved. All the stress of those social interactions will be gone at last. Just me and my mom and dad again, away from it all. I really, really hope they're safe. Yet, I know they're not. I just do... I know they didn't survive. I keep telling myself that I'm just being silly, but... I need to prepare myself anyway. I wonder if I gave up the opportunity of a lifetime by returning here. Giving up that title. Duty calls. I hate duty. I hate responsibility. I hate that I have to do this. I don't think I'll do a good job. I'll just end up messing up their work and ruining everything. I'm so scared. I don't want people relying on me. I'll only let them down. Hate, hate, hate. Dread, dread, dread. I wish I could just fall into a ball and die sometimes to be away from all the stress and responsibility. And the thoughts of having to deal with other people when I lack all these important skills and... and... I wish so much that they're okay. And survive alone. I... I... I'm here, now. Look so... dead. Wait, where's the... Is that? Okay, so there is another Dreamstone for you. Again, definitely some hints as to who that was. I won't necessarily highlight exactly what those things were. I'll see if you guys can figure it out. But with that, I think this is probably a good place for us to wrap up here. So, with that... I'll see you guys in the next episode, and we'll check out what that other area was, and we'll see if you guys can figure out who that was who was speaking to us through the Dreamstone.